Problem 6. The point of this problem is to address potential confusion with regard to the location of pivot columns. So what's interesting about this problem is that column 1, being the zero column, is linearly dependent all by itself. So the first pivot cannot occur in the first column. It can only occur in the second column. And indeed, we have a pivot here, but it is in the wrong row because the first pivot must come in row 1. So the first order of business is to switch rows 1 and 2. So let's make a copy of this problem so we record our progress. Identify that this is our pivot and switch rows 1 and 2. So let's make a copy of row 2. Put row 1 in place of row 2 and row 2 back in place of row 1 and also switch the 3 and the 7 on the right hand side. Now we can proceed with Gaussian elimination. Since this is our pivot, the next operation is to subtract 7 of row 1 from row 3. We should probably do it on the next line. So subtracting 7 of row 1 from row 3 puts a 0 here, and 9 minus 42 is 33. On the right-hand side, 16 minus 49 is also 33. Okay, let's also replace zeros with blanks so that look is more consistent with the previous problems. So we're done with the first step of Gaussian elimination, and there are just a couple left. Let's make another copy. And realize that this is our pivot. And what we could do first is turn it into a unit pivot, dividing the entire row by 3. So now we have the two ones. So now let's proceed with Gaussian elimination. The next step in Gaussian elimination is to eliminate the 33 with this unit pivot. And that, of course, is accomplished by subtracting 33 of row 2 from row 3, eliminating this 33 and the 33 on the right-hand side. So we're almost done. We're now done with Gaussian elimination. And there's only a single step of back substitution, and that's to eliminate the 6, which can be done by subtracting 6 of row 2 from row 1. That eliminates the 6 and turns the 7 into a 1. So now we're done with all of Gaussian elimination, and we can now come up very easily with our general solution. So for a particular solution, we see that the vector on the right-hand side is second column plus third column. So we have to be a little bit careful, realizing that the first entry is zero, followed by two ones. So that's the particular solution. And of course, the null space corresponds to this column being all zeros. And it is therefore alpha times one, zero, zero. And maybe in this case, it's advantageous to combine the two vectors and simply capture the general solution by this very simple expression. So this completes problem six.